It is the dead of winter. It is very cold and it is very gray. So I vote that we make something that is aggressively sunshiny. <laughs> Here we are with our pattern and fabric. For the pattern, I'm using the Truly Victorian Walking Skirt pattern. It is based on an 1898 skirt, and for our fabric, the cat's walking on it. One sec. For the fabric, I wanted something intensely sunshiny, so I dug through my stash and I found this wonderful sunflower print that I actually bought in, I think, 2014. So I've kind of been saving it for the perfect project, but I think this is it. I've got two yards, which should be just enough for the pattern. And then I went out and bought this kind of buttery yellow broadcloth to line it with. So the pattern pieces, you can see that these are quite long. They are actually longer than my cutting table is wide, but I'm not making a full length version of this. I want it to come just below my knees. So for me, that is 26 inches down from the waist. I measured down from the waist on each side with my ruler, and then I drew a line across. You probably can't see it, but I did try to curve it slightly just so that it doesn't look weird. It's got the, the same curve that the bottom of the skirt pattern actually has in it. Good morning! It is a new day. Today, our goal is to get the facing and the interfacing for each of the skirt panels cut out so that I can go ahead and put all of those pieces together to get the flat lining started. So the other day I cut out the outer fabric and the lining fabric, but I still need to handle facing and interfacing because with the flat lining process, all of those pieces need to be ready to go before I can start construction at all. Here's the setup for creating the interfacing part. We've got the actual interfacing right here, newsprint to trace the pattern, the original pattern, which as you can see is way too side for the skirt piece. And then of course we're going to need the skirt piece in order to trace the pattern itself. So let's get to work because we've got seven of these to make. So I'm laying the pattern down on the fabric and the first thing I'm doing is just marking how high the facing and interfacing should come up. And mark that here and then I'm marking it down at the bottom as well then on the other side for this one make sure that the edges match up because you can see for this it's gone past the end of the skirt because the original panel is longer so it's not going to have the same curve so I'm mark it right here and then I'm marking it again right at the top. Anytime you are making your own patterns, always, 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 always label them. <laughs> Once we're done with patterning the facing, we also need to do the interfacing. Now for the interfacing, I'm going to make this half an inch smaller on all sides because I'm using a fairly stiff interfacing and I don't want to have to stitch through that on the seams. So basically what I've done is I've traced three sides around this. I'm gonna go ahead and trace the last side now. And then I'm going to measure one half inch in on all four sides, and then I'll cut that out. That's going to be my interfacing pattern. I found that that's the easiest way to do it is to just trace the pattern and then take off that half inch seam allowance. Uh, if you have a better way, that's totally fine. It is your project. Once we've got the facing and the interfacing cut, the last step before we're finally ready to start assembling the pieces is I need to go ahead and fuse this all together. So I've got my fusible interfacing piece cut out. 
I'm going to match that up to the seam lines. It's okay if they're a little bit inside the seam lines. What you don't want is for them to overlap the seam lines because if you do that, that means that in addition to sewing through three layers of fabric, so the outer fabric, the lining, and the facing fabric, you'll also be sewing through the inner facing and that's probably going to be fairly difficult. So it's okay if they're a little bit on the inside of the seam lines. Second step, go ahead and carefully put the facing fabric over it. And because this is fusible, it's literally just going to be ironed all of it together. Um, it will be kind of like glued together. So we don't have to do anything with this once it's done, except for essentially tuck down the top seam allowance there. Okay, and since this is um, cotton fabric, but the interfacing is like a thousand percent polyester, you want to make sure you use a low setting on your iron. I like to start from the middle and then just kind of scooch the iron over. Don't worry if the facing pieces end up going past the lining pieces. You can always cut those off later if you need to, if you have kind of overlap. Okay, so here's the outer fabric of the skirt. It is wrong side up. We're going to put the lining, facing, and interfacing combo on top of it and match it up to the balance marks in the pattern. Okay, so once my fabric is finally behaving, I'm going to throw a couple pins in it. I'm mostly going to rely on pattern weights for this because pins can kind of stretch this out and distort it, but I am gonna put a pin in each um, registration mark for the pattern. Okay, so first I'm gonna add some weight to the pattern in the form of a couple of rocks. One and two. So basically, as I'm stitching down along this, I can pull the fabric and use the tension from the rocks to hold this steady um, and just make sure that I have these two edges matched up here. Next up, basting thread. I'm using black so that it stands out. Yes, please come and inspect the work. Let me know if you think I'm doing a good job. Hi, baby. Yes, I may or may not have to kick you out in just a minute, depending on how much of a brat you decide to be. That's right, baby boy. Okay, all right, we'll see if this works or if we have to kick the boy out. This process is called flatlining, and basically it's the more historical method of lining where you line each piece separately and then treat that panel as its own one piece of fabric as opposed to today's bag linings wherein you make essentially two garments and then sew them together and flip them inside out so you have a lined garment. Good morning. It is finally time to start the stitching on this. I think I probably have about 20 hours of prep work in it already and I'm just finally getting started now. So without further ado, let's do some sewing. The directions say to start by putting the two back panels together, so that is what I'm doing here. The next step is to attach the placket, which basically is a strip of fabric that's going to overlay the opening right here. Everything between the stitching and the fastening is going to be covered by the placket. So I know that there's no way I'm going to get to actually stitching the pockets on today, but I'd like to at least cut them out. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that out of these scraps. My pocket pattern calls for adding half an inch of seam allowance, so first I'm going to trace around the outside and then just cut it out with roughly half an inch of seam allowance. <laughs> he fights the fish toy. It's so angy. <laughs> we like to call him angy when he's being mad, but in this case it's just play mad. 
So once I've got the back panels connected and then the side back panels attached to those, the directions say the next step is to put the side front panels in. So I've got that here, but um, one thing is that I didn't quite have enough fabric here, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and piece this. I need to do that obviously before I stitch this seam from the side front panel onto the side back panel. So right here I have some scraps from the scrap pile. So after some experimenting with pinning and repinning and repinning, I have this matched up pretty much as closely as I can get it. Um, I gave it a quick press and I'm ready to stitch. I did not want to do a traditional kind of seam where I have the wrong sides uh, facing out and the right sides together because I figured that if it was even the smallest bit off, I would probably want to rip the whole thing out and redo it. So I'm not gonna do that. There's probably a better way to stitch this than the way that I'm doing, but this is the way that I know how, so I'm gonna go ahead and try and make it work as best I can. So on the back of the fabric, I'm taking kind of a larger stitch. Okay. And then on the front, just like the smallest little bite of the fabric that I can take. <laughs> My camera's having trouble focusing, sorry. There we go. So you can see there's like a, a little tiny divot in the fabric, but that's kind of it. After probably about an hour of stitching, this is finally done. You can see, here's the back. Um, I ended up, I originally thought that I was gonna do this just in this light yellow, and then I went full perfectionist, and you can see that I ended up with orange, brown, and green in here as well, but I personally think it looks very nice. All right, so here's where we are right now. I have been working away at this on evenings after I get home from work and essentially the only thing that I have to still do is, so I've got this seam stitched, you can see up at the top, I'm just finishing up the pocket and I still need to stitch it down below the pocket and then I just need to add the pocket in to this side and stitch that seam down. It looks kind of bubbly up here, but that's because this seam is slightly curved. So once I've got it put together, it's just not gonna lay flat anymore. As I've been going, I've been kind of finishing the seam allowance on the long seams. Come on, focus. There we go. So you can see that I've got it stitched right here and then on the other side, it's just kind of hemmed down or felled down. And I've been doing that for the facing as well as I go. The only difference is that once this gets this unfinished seam, it's just tacked there so that I can finish the seam. updates come to you from under the sewing table because um, his lordship, Mr. Angus, was being very cute and I kind of wanted to share him with you. Anyways, so um, basically I budgeted four weeks for this project and we are now halfway through the seventh week, so that's fun. Uh, but basically there's only three steps left to do and no. Oh, the cat left. That was the whole reason I'm under the sewing table. All right. Let's reevaluate here. All right, continuing our early broadcast, but from a different part of the room. So basically, um, I am in week seven and a half of this project, and I only have three steps left, which is nice. I need to attach the waistband. I need to finish the hem and I need to add closure. I had to move the tripod because Angus was um, trying to make friends with it and I need him to not knock it over, but uh, we're gonna try it like this and hopefully Angus can accompany us for the waistband, but we'll see if we end up having to kick him out, poor thing. 
Alright, so the first step that I'm doing is I've already marked my center fronts and I'm going to go ahead and match them up and start to pin the waistband onto the skirt all the way around ready for stitching. Here we have the waistband and then this is the amount of skirt that needs to be pleated or gathered into the waistband so there's a couple of inches of excess. I'm going to run a heavy thread through it in order to gather it and then pin those in place so that I can get it tacked down and start stitching. Finally time for the second to last step. We are turning the hem under in order to finish it. Uh, the ideal tool for this is a Dritz Easy Hem, as far as I know, which I don't have, but if you are <laughs> like me and you saved all of your school supplies, a metal ruler will work in a pinch. So basically just turn it over here press with the iron, and then as I go, I'm just tacking it down in place. I, I could pin it, but I actually don't have a lot of pins. So could I buy more? Yes, will I buy more? Probably not. So just a little bit of a press there. <coughs> and basically the metal of the ruler, just since that also heats, it helps hold the press. All right, second step, we're going to tuck this under again so that we have a finished edge instead of having this raw edge of the fabric here. I do need to take my tacking out for that. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm going to trim back these under layers so that I can just tuck the outer fabric around it. For these, since there's an interfacing layer, I can't really lay the pin sideways, they will bend. So I'm just sticking them straight through, and since I'm only stitching between here and here and not going all the way through to the other side of the fabric, it doesn't actually matter because my, um, <laughs> because my thread has no danger of catching on the pins at all. The last step to finishing the hem is actually felling it down. So I'm going to be using smaller than usual felling stitches on the hemline than I did on the long seams because I don't think that this hemline is going to catch on anything. It's, you know, just below knee length. It's not a long floor length skirt, but just in case it does catch on anything, having shorter, smaller felling stitches and more of them is going to make for a more secure hemline than having the larger longer stitches that I used on the interior hems. It's just less likely to have the hemline tear out. So I did end up deciding to go back and throw like an extra line of stitching through this. I don't know whether it's going to be necessary or not, but <laughs> I figured this is a really heavy skirt. It's a lot of layers, so I may as well Kind of help the waistband out by giving it that extra security. Good morning. I am coming to you from not the sewing room today because things are currently being rearranged in there, so stay tuned if that is of interest. Anyways, so I am going to now finish the waistband of my wonderful skirt. Okay, so off camera I pressed the raw edge of the waistband under and then I pinned it. I'm just going to tack it real quick first and then fold it over the other raw edge. 
covering all of my wonderful stitching that I worked so hard on, but that's okay, I will know it's there. And then the waistband is all done. Hello again, I am now done with the waistband. Gave it a quick press to make it look nice and sharp. That actually didn't take me that long. I think it only took me about an hour to stitch the other side down, which is lovely. The only thing that I now need to do is closures. I'm so ready to have closure with this project. It's taken me like eight weeks. I don't really like hooks and eyes, so I'm using snaps. Uh, yes, the snaps are black, but only the stitching's gonna be visible on the outside, so I'll just use yellow thread. 